So technical session number 17 is going to be all about that. It's going to be all about prioritizing and elevating the tickets. What do we tackle first? How do we triage? How do we know what's more important than another thing? When do we hand it off? You know, I love the idea of persistence where you can consider and sit there and hammer away at a problem until you figure it out. But if it's a problem that somebody in networking can solve in 30 seconds and you spend two days trying to figure it out, but you solved it. I mean, it's great for you, but the customer is probably going to be highly agitated because they needed their server back up and running, right? <clears throat> so the persistence in this arena would be knowing when you need to hand it off, but even after you hand it off, do a follow-up. Say, you know, go back into that ticket a little bit later, see what it was that the network administrator did to correct the problem. Maybe send them a quick message. Hey, what about this scenario keyed you in that that was going to be the solution? It shows initiative on your side and follow-up and a desire to become better. So that's how we would show persistence in this instance. So for this particular technical session, our objectives are going to be to describe the purpose of prioritizing the factors to consider when prioritizing and the impact of prioritizing tickets. We're also going to be given a series of tickets, uh, brief descriptions, and we're going to assign a priority level based on a shared set of criteria that we're going to talk about. <clears throat> and then we're going to determine when to elevate a ticket to a supervisor and explain what and how to effectively communicate when you're elevating. Other than it's broken, I don't know what's wrong. That generally doesn't you know, play out well. <clears throat> so in your mind, what does it mean when we say prioritize? What does this mean to you? Prioritize means to set something, you set something to like your highest and use your most attention. Okay. Um, focus. Urgency. So I heard focus. What did you say, Majid? I said level of urgency. Level of urgency. All right. Order of importance. I see that, Aaron. Top of the list. Rank task based upon importance. There you go. Putting something in first place if it needs to be there. <clears throat> so another term we would use is triage. So do any of you remember how much time an IT professional roughly spends? We talked about this in probably one of our first few lessons. <clears throat> how much a IT professional spends triaging tickets a day? Justin says about one to two hours. Is it like 10, 15%? Yeah, about 10 to 15%. Every day is spent triaging. The rest of the time, you're kind of solving those issues right <clears throat> so my question now is is should it professionals tackle tickets in the order in which they're submitted i mean it's first come first serve right i was here first i don't care how complicated my problem is i cannot access my candy crush high score The servers can wait. So priority level is important. Then you're stumbling, sorry. Try to go back. Flip flop back on. All right. So here's a scenario for you. IT professional works for a large company and is working on tackling a ticket submitted last week involving a client who reported her title is not appearing correctly in the email system. Meanwhile, that morning, the entire sales department, which consists of 125 people, is unable to connect to the internet. Which of these is more important? Second one. Yeah, the internet. Her, her, she's been there for days. But the operations of the business are at stake. 
This is her title we're talking about here. Eh, title Schmeidel, she'll live without it. <laughs> <laughs> so instantly your eyes are keying in on 125 people unable to work versus one person not seeing their title in their email. So we got a couple issues going on here, right? So not only is it 125 people affected, but they're shut down, they're unable to work. So they are out of commission. So we have multiple facets that's causing a problem, right? So there's some criteria we don't have to fill this out, but what are some what are some scenarios that you can think of if IT professional IT professionals talking is hard are not effectively triaging tickets? They're not prioritizing properly. What are some results of this? Possibly some data loss if it's a situation. Data loss. That, yeah. Okay. I like that. What else? Very unsatisfied customers. Very unsatisfied customers, Tamana. What happens if, if customers are very unsatisfied? What do they do? Go elsewhere. They go elsewhere. They shop with their feet and their dollars, right? <laughs> what else? Business could lose a lot of money. With that. Business could lose a lot of money if, if, you're, if your business is based upon selling widgets on the internet and you don't have internet access, what happens? Can't sell widgets, right? How do you think upper management would feel about this? Oh, they'd probably fire you. All right. Probably get really upset, right? But Billy was here first. They couldn't see their title in their email for days. I had to focus on that before I could get to sales. First come, first serve. You know, so there's quite a few things that we need to pay attention to. When we're prioritizing now, this will be different from company to company. Each company is going to have their own kind of system with regards to triaging, you know, and before you start getting scared about, you know, what your first IT job is going to be like, always understand that there is a training program, no matter where you go, because they got to train you on how to use their systems. Almost no company is expecting you to literally come in and just be like, boom, off the races, ready to go right out of the gate. Not saying it doesn't happen, uh, you know, but for the most part, for the most part, that was one of my classmates, no kidding. <laughs> um, they will have some form of training program to show you how they do things and to kind of give you an idea as to what their procedures are. But generally speaking, these are the main things we look for with regards to triaging and how we set level of importance. And the first one is how many people are affected, like the previous scenario we're giving, 125 people versus one. That's a no-brainer, right? 125 people get the you know, get the heads up on that one. Two, how important are the services affected to our business? The sales team servers down versus someone's title in their email. They can type the title in their email and their signature, right? But Sales not being able to function, though, that's, that's bad. And then finally, when does the issue need to be resolved? You know, there's a time horizon on a lot of things. So what is that time horizon? If I say I need to, um, 
update to a new operating system before May 2024. How urgent is that? Very low. Yeah, because I have a long time to figure it out, right? But if I say um, the power has gone out at a facility and my US uh, UPSs have two hours worth of battery life, how urgent is that? Very, very, right? Because that's maximum two hours, doesn't mean guaranteed two hours. So time horizon makes a big deal as well. So how many people are affected? How important are the services affected? And when does the issue need to be resolved? So those are three questions you need to ask yourself on every single ticket you see. And that's what gets us into our priority levels. So if none of those priorities are affected, like the lady with the email, it wasn't a, a critical service. Um, it didn't necessarily need to be resolved right away. And it was only one person. Right, so that'd be considered a low priority. If you have at least one category severely impacted, so if it was just, it didn't matter what it was, but you had 125 salespeople affected, this isn't saying that they couldn't work at all, but they're all affected by the same thing, then it would become a medium priority because you have a large amount of people who are affected by the same issue. And then finally, two categories or more now we talk about 125 people in sales and all of them are not, allow, not allowed to work. And it becomes a high priority. So for the purposes of this exercise, we're just gonna go low, medium, or high. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to share a document with you and we're gonna break out into groups. And you're asking, what are we gonna do in groups? We're gonna argue with each other. All right, so I'm gonna hand you this document like this. It has various scenarios on this document. You're gonna have about four to five people in each group. And I want you to mark what priority you think this falls in and then what order you need to handle these tickets in. So you're gonna practice triaging, but you're gonna do it as a group and you need to be able to defend your answers. All right. Ooh. Yeah, here we go. So here, I'm gonna drop the link in for you real quick. Now, everybody go ahead and open this link up. And then when we're done, we're gonna come back here and you can just write it down on scrap paper, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then priority and then order your tickets. And then we're going to come back here and you're going to defend your answers here. And we're going to see how close we can get together on what order all this stuff should be done in. You understand? All right. Pause the recording. All right, so stepping away from the triage aspect of it a little bit, what do you think it means when you say to elevate a ticket? Do we hold it up and go, man, that is a horrible problem. What do we do? What does elevating a ticket mean? I I move, move, it to the priority. move it up to another level of priority. Go, Justin. Any others? Bringing up to the next authority level. Next tier. You've kicked it up to the next tier. What are some reasons we might do this? More people begin to be affected by an issue. I'm sorry, one more time, Tamana. 
Uh, more people become affected by an issue. More people are becoming affected by the issue. That's a good reason. Like it's the, the problem is spreading. Yeah. We are not able to handle it. We're not able to handle it. Maybe a uh, time urgency. Time urgency. There you go. The system will explode in 10 seconds. You can't. If after some it, tries, so we can't fix okay. it like that. Sorry, what was that, Andrew? You don't know how to handle it, so you give it to somebody who does. Okay. So you've, you've gone through, you've done some troubleshooting steps. Doesn't ring any bells. So we move it up the chain. Okay. Anything else? What about the prospect of knowing how to fix it, but not actually having the authority to be able to? We know it needs to be done, but only certain people have the authority to enact the change that needs to be done. Right? Or maybe we have to access information that we do not have authorization to gain access to. You know, like if it has something to do with research and development, and that's obviously where the bread and butter of the company comes from, and they say only senior executives, so like the CIO or, you know, senior level admins are allowed to actually go in and work with the data in these areas. So we see there's an issue. Even if we know how to solve it, we're an experienced operator, we've handled situations like this before, it's just in an area that we just don't have the authority to access. You'd have to hand it off. So sometimes it's not necessarily about skill. So all good answers, I like it. So there's a variety of reasons why we do this. So when do you think it might be a scenario where it's like, do not pass go, go straight to jail, you know, do not collect $200. The moment it comes in, you immediately are like, here you go. So we talked about different scenarios. What would be a scenario where we would do this instantaneously without even an attempt? Probably the authorized thing you mentioned. If I so can't author do anything, then yeah, authorization that would be that would definitely be one of them. So that would go up to the appropriate level on that one. The entire West Coast is without power. Yeah, they Sir, can I'm deal just, with that. I'm just an intern. I'm going to get you to somebody who really can handle this issue. <laughs> so if it's like a catastrophically large issue and you know the moment that it comes in this is beyond your ability to to deal with yes you would elevate instantaneously <laughs> all right so when we do elevate these tickets, we have to be able to convey the information. You know, we don't, we don't just call it and be like, hey, lights out on the West Coast, bye. You know, we have to be able to convey at least what's going on. And we have to use brief descriptions of the IT issue, giving them concise information. If you have already attempted a solution, like this isn't an instant handoff. So say we've tried a couple of things. Okay, I've tried A, B, and C. None of these things have worked. <clears throat> Reason for the elevation, um, it is taking too much time and I have exhausted my internal knowledge, the knowledge bank in the ticketing system, 
I've, you know, went online, I've looked at some forums, not been able to find anything. And I've asked some of my coworkers around here and none of them have an idea how to solve it. So I've, I've tried solving it using multiple knowledge bases, but it's taking too much time. I need to hand it off to somebody um, a little more skilled than me. And later follow up and see what we may have missed. Hint, like test out, it's usually something small. So we need to pass that information. Let's give it a shot. 